Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Chris. Welcome to another simulation of the 2020 Miami Hurricanes. This time they're taking on the Florida Gators. Very curious to see how this is going to work out. First off, be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. It helps out a ton. Definitely want to get all the word out about the Miami Hurricanes, what we're doing with simulations around college football. So here we go. Definitely looking forward to this one. You guys remember these two teams squared off in 2019 in the season opener. Florida came away with a 24-20 win. Goes on to have a great season, finished sixth in the country. Miami obviously had a disappointing year. So different look for both teams, most notably Miami with quarterback change. Congratulations, Derek King, officially starting quarterback for the 2020 season. That's the biggest adjustment that Miami has in terms of their personnel. However, there's been other key additions as well. Defensive end Quincy Roche is definitely a big asset as well. So here we go. Jalen Knighton's going to take the kickoff here. Both teams in some unique uniforms, ones you're not always used to seeing with either squad. And with this simulation, just doing a sneak peek, only one half of action. Maybe these teams face each other in 2020 if something happens with the scheduling. But as it stands, their next game to face one another is 2024. And certainly everybody enjoys when these squads get together. It always provides a great environment, great atmosphere within this rivalry. And here we go. So first play, Derek shows his running ability, gets out there, picks up 10 yards on the play. And Florida has, you know, they had a lot of momentum with last year, but they obviously they had some key guys that they're going to need to re be replaced. I saw number six right there. That's Brenton Cox Jr. He's a guy that Florida fans are excited to see what happens with him this year. And obviously the quarterback situation with Miami, everyone's excited. But with what Florida saw last year with Kyle Trask, the way he came on, you're certainly hoping he builds on that year and very interesting the way things work out. Both of these guys know each other, played together, trained together. So a lot of uh, a lot of interaction between the two guys from Houston. So it's great to see these guys both doing well at this level. And just a quick look at Miami's offensive line, as well as their running backs and receivers. If you've been following these simulations, obviously I've had Cameron Harris as the running back, the primary back, and just trying to mix it up a little bit, give some other guys a look. That's why you're seeing Don Chaney Jr. and Jalen Knighton in the backfield right now. But yeah, obviously, as it stands, Harris is looking to be the starter. That's a good play right there with James Houston, South Florida guy. So Miami's facing the third and seven. I think that's one of the areas where you should see some improvement with the Eric at quarterback is that third down efficiency. And this is his first one here. Third down, obviously, is such a big part for offense and defense. Continue drives or to get off the field if you're a defense. So it's a big one here. For the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. So here we go. Miami's going two receivers, two running backs, shotgun. Quick throw. That's to Cheney, number two. He's stuffed right there. That's number three. That's Marco Wilson, another South Florida guy. A lot of guys from all over the state, obviously, for both of these squads. That's one thing that makes it a lot of fun when they get together. And I don't think there's any question. Everybody on both sides would love it if these two teams faced each other more often. Certainly a lot of bragging rights. I feel like with Miami fans, it's a different type of competition when it comes to Florida State, where there just seems to be such a strong dislike for Florida and their program. And I think that's what makes this, this game even better. So here we go. Here's Kyle Trask. So 
And one thing that's interesting about the Florida offense to keep in mind is former Miami running back Lorenzo Lingard is transferred over. The status is still in question as of now, but I went ahead and put him on the game. Makes it more fun. So you guys will get a chance to see Lingard in action. And real quick, Florida fans, if you guys are here and you notice a little bit of number changes, the problem is Florida has not released their official roster. So I had to give some guys some numbers. So in case you guys are wondering or you see this later after the fact, that's the reason. And then Pierce is back as well. And another thing with Florida's offense, and, and they've got their tight ends back, Kyle Pitts, but, and they've got some good receivers, but it's kind of a new look a little bit. Certain guys came on last year. Copeland is one that stands out to me. And there's Pierce right there, 27. Nice little cut. So there we go, Miami's defense. It's 26, Gervin Hall. And if you guys have been following the dynasty, but I've been playing out the 2020 season on NCAA Football 14. You guys know what happened with Gervin Hall this year. Taking home that Thorpe Award. So that's great to see. Great year for him. Okay, so third and two. Here we go. Miami's defense has a chance to get off the field. And unable to do so. That's a big pass play. That's Grimes right there, number eight. He's another. He's a receiver that looks to step up with his role. In terms of his production, good last year. Looking to take that next step. Again, Florida's got some guys that are some receivers that look to replace. I think they had four seniors last year, so certainly guys, even the guy like Grimes who played, looking for a bigger contribution this year. So, and I had a chance to see cover the Orange Bowl and saw the Gators in action their final game last year oh big throw here we go going deep oh my goodness showing off that big arm there good coverage by Miami secondary and this is you know I'm looking at the the team right here this pretty much is who I would project as the starters for Miami the one that stands out to me is Amari Carter. Maybe he cracks at one of those two safety spots. Based on his playing time a year ago, but I just think Bubba Bolden's in, in store for a big year. And I think Amari will play a lot. I just think Bubba will play more, and Gervin played more than Amari last year. And I would pencil him in there as well. I think that's the, the most noticeable when you look at the starting 11 in the simulation for Miami. Maybe the biggest position battle. I think the corners will stay the same with Ivy and Blades. Linebacker McLeod, obviously, and I think the linebackers, I think they're going to go with Sam Brooks as that number two linebacker. And they play a lot of 4-2-5 with that striker. Looks like Frierson will step in there. But they could obviously slide Amari Carter into there. I definitely think that striker position, I think, you know, from covering the team the last few years, ever since this defensive staff came in with Manny Diaz, talking about the striker position, there was a little bit of uncertainty exactly what they wanted to have in that, in that mold. What kind of player? Did they want a linebacker slash defensive end? Did they want a safety in that spot? Did they want a cornerback? You know, what... And we've seen it emerge a little bit. You know, linebacker Zach McLeod kind of was there for a little bit. But really the way it's emerged is with Romeo Finley more natural as a safety. That's who has been handling it the last couple years. So that's that's how I see that position. I think it's more of a safety style. Gilbert Frierson falls in line with that safety corner mix. And I think that's the way they... They'll go with it moving forward unless something changes with their personnel. Cowboys 
For example, I think a lot of Miami fans are obviously excited about five-star commit James Williams. Where will he fit on the Miami defense when he arrives next year? And I don't want to talk too much about it because this is about 2020. Nice little pitch play there. Little tussle. Florida's on the move here. But yeah, who knows? Maybe James is a guy that maybe they get creative and, and they want to put him in that role. Where a safety, in a sense, maybe not in that striker role because you want him on the field a lot, but just a guy basically that you'd want to move around a lot because of his abilities and take advantage of that, whether it's close to the line or off. So Florida's definitely on the move here. That's Tony right there. That's number one. So Trask is getting these guys going here. So nice tackle by Blades. To save a touchdown. There's a shot at 26 Garvin Hall. You're going to see the action coming right at you. But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about a pass play. I definitely think I think Al Blades is going to be an interesting player to watch this year. And I know both of the corners with him and Ivy. I think there were spots. I think there were spots in this game, in particular last year when they played Florida. That you're hoping for a little bit better production. Okay, so Pierce goes in for the touchdown. The, the, the dive there looked a little unnecessary, but that's a nice touchdown for Florida. Miami's definitely got to respond. One thing with the corners that stands out to me is I think with a year under their belt as starters, I think there's a chance that you could see them really have productive seasons this year as juniors. He played a lot last year. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym. played primarily on special teams as freshmen, so you're definitely looking for big things for those guys to take that jump. Being very reliable players outside. So, all right, so Florida's celebrating. Obviously, they get the touchdown. Looking at the crowd. So, okay, Miami definitely needs to respond here. You know, and I, and re, just a quick reaction with Derek King getting the official nod from UM to be the starting quarterback. I don't, I don't think it's any, it's not a surprise. I think it's good. I always think it's good for a, a coach to announce it as soon as possible. And I, I think it's good for guys to know their roles, especially a quarterback. And obviously, if something if he doesn't play well or, or if something doesn't go right or something like that, they can obviously make a move. But I'd be surprised if he doesn't have a, a really productive season. Let's look at Don Chaney Jr. I think that's the biggest noticeable difference with this offense. As to the way it'll shake out during the season, I'm expecting Harris to be the starting running back for Miami. Once again, like I said, I just wanted because they don't seem to rotate the backs very often in these games. So that's why I want to give you guys a look at some of these other backs. It's a nice run by Cheney. I do expect them to play. I expect Miami to go with different guys this is an all around terrific defensive front hard to move the ball against them on the ground in the backfield there just kind of mix it up a little bit here they come after the quarterback after the pickup of 5 here second and here we go first quarter's winding down here Miami going four wide with a run there. Jalen Knight and getting involved in the action. And also another one is the offensive line. I think it will be interesting to see how Miami chooses its offensive line with Jared Williams in the mix as a grad transfer from Houston, who primarily has played right tackle in his career. But certainly could be an option at left tackle. That's where I think he will eventually settle in at. But Miami is returning its starting left tackle in Zion Nelson. So they could stick with that. 
or they could flip him. And then with Navon Donaldson sitting out or taking a red shirt this year, you know, that starting guard position, he started at left guard. I think that it opens up there and then we'll see how it goes. John Campbell's in here yeah, now, like but obviously Nicholson things can get mixed up. New offensive line coach. Here's King. Off play action. And from the spring, or in the spring, we saw Justice mix it up a little bit. We're shuffling guys around, and I think he'll continue to do so. That's a nice catch by Wiggins there. I think it's a catch. I don't think they're going to replay it. Yep, that's definitely a catch. Good grab by Wiggins. Right in front of the Florida sideline. So Miami crosses midfield here. So here we go. Hurricanes on the move. And I, one of the reasons why I've kind of waited on this simulation a little bit was, you know, just to make sure, you know, just to give some other teams a look. I know you guys are all excited about the Gators and what they're doing and vice versa. This is an interesting formation here. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Nice throw. Now a quick slant as the throws complete. And they're going to have another And it definitely is interesting in the sense that with Miami's offense, we're expecting certain things. But offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley did an interview with 24-7 Sports as part of their social distance series. And one thing that stood out to me in watching that that's a nice catch. Look at that, Xavier Restrepo. Shout out to Xavier, the freshman, getting in there, taking advantage of his opportunity. That's a huge catch. Down on the depth chart, but he gets in there. But anyways, one thing that stands out to me with Lashley in the interview was he talked about his offense. He didn't know exactly what to label it, where it's whether it's the spread or air raid, because he has played, has he, excuse me, he has coached in those systems and the one thing that he said what he wanted to classify is like maybe it's a power spread because he says that because he definitely believes in having a strong running game in addition to their passing attack I think that will be important for Miami in their offense to have that balance attack the other thing that stands out to me too is just him talking about the different offenses he's been at or to the different schools whether it was Auburn things he's learned at Auburn and then how he's moved on to Arkansas State SMU and where he's at now and seems like he's a guy that's oh that's a nice run by King I thought he might score there but Lashley's definitely seemed comfortable in the things he's picked up and essentially meshing different parts different pieces and created an offense that best suits his personality. I think it'll be interesting to see exactly what to expect. And because we saw limited action in the spring with just the four practices, not a spring game or a scrimmage, we did see one open practice, so that was good. So we go pistol four wide. Definitely enjoying these different formations. So Knighton goes in motion. Got to look for Knighton. <laughs> yeah, a little, little out of bounds. But it'll be definitely interesting to see how the formations work. The philosophies with what they want to go with. So here we go. Shotgun again from the two. This time it's a handoff to Knighton. Oh, and he gets to the edge and gets in for the touchdown. Good for him. He definitely looked like he was going to get stopped. But it showed that speed to the outside. Yeah, definitely just gets to the outside there and gets in. Look at this. That's Dunlap right there. Nice play by Knight. And so there we go. So the Hurricanes, they do respond, which is great to see. And just want to make sure I let you guys know if you haven't been on the website lately on Inside the U. 
I was able to put something, you know, it reminds me just because you saw Restrepo get that, that catch there as a freshman. There's a question some people were want to know about Keyshawn Smith, how he was doing with his progression in the offseason. So there's a VIP article on him, his recruitment. In part one and part two, you'll definitely see that very soon with how his summer has progressed, things he's been working on as he gets ready for his first year. And I definitely think he's a guy that you want to pay attention to among those four freshman wide receivers. I really liked what I saw in the spring. Again, not a lot of action with a limited amount of practices, but I think Keyshawn's a guy, if you're excited about him, I think it makes sense. I think he's a guy worth being excited about. So be sure to check that out. And just a shout out to everybody who's been not just following these videos, but I just want a huge shout out to everybody on the message boards on the site. A lot of discussion. And reestablish themselves now whether it's about the, the football team offseason workouts I had a piece on freshman Isaiah Walker both programs would be interested in, in that because he went to Florida and then he transferred to Miami this year but recruiting tons of buzz with recruiting a lot of comments there and everybody is also jumping in on the basketball and baseball discussions which is always great to see And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. It's a tough play there by McLeod. And there's Roche. Definitely very curious to see how he works out at Miami. Had that huge year last year at Temple. So the face mask puts them in even better shape than they were in as they'll have a conference defensive player of the year. And I think that's the one thing with Miami's guys that are getting a lot of attention in the offseason. You know, sometimes some off seasons and maybe even this one a look to a certain extent, but there seems to be a lot of it excitement or hype surrounding players in the offseason. A lot of people want everybody to be as good as the former greats at Miami. That's just the how it's been. You get excited. You're hoping these guys turn into some of those players. However, one of the differences to me this offseason with the, the hype, the attention, it's being delivered to guys who have actually been have proven to have success. Granted, a guy like Roche, who has had it at a different school, and certainly there's a step up in competition to a certain extent. But I definitely think, you know, that's why he gets the attention. He, he earned defensive, con defensive, defensive Player of the Year in the conference. Everything that De'Ara King has done at Houston, again, step up in level of competition. However, 50 touchdowns, the big numbers, everything he's done at quarterback, the stuff he's done at wide receiver. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. I think that you look at the attention he's getting, it's because of those results that he's had. Greg Rousseau, everybody's talking first-round pick. There's a reason for that. He had a monster year last year. And it came in a season where he wasn't a starter, where he wasn't a guy that received all of the playing time, particularly early in the year. And he was still putting up big numbers. And he's getting in a lot of attention. But again, he's had success. And I, again, that's that's the, some of the stuff that I see. You know, Brevin Jordan at tight end, he gets a lot of attention. He hasn't had that monster year quite yet. He's been very solid and very productive in his first two years. But you're looking for that just that big monster year. But he has had success. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their So we'll see how it goes with these guys. Okay, so Miami's defense definitely needs to stop here. So here we go. We've got just two minutes before halftime before we wrap up this simulation, the sneak peek. And Florida's doing what they want. A little disappointed in Miami's defense here. But maybe they can hold them to a field goal. 
to the two-minute warning. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. They're going to look to throw. So that's Oh my goodness, he breaks free of the tackle. Gervin Hall. That's gamble right there. Double eights. Man. Oh, and then I gets that celebration. Just tucks the ball. So that's tough. Could not wrap him up. Tight end here. So Florida takes the lead. They might go into the lead at halftime. And if that happens, I know Miami fans would say, but let this game play out. We definitely would have got the win. I know what you guys would say. But just doing a half of action. I have some things in mind that I want to do in the future with simulations. And one thing I want to say, just if you guys, I always ask if you guys, if there's teams you want to see, doesn't matter if it's on the schedule or not, that you want to see Miami face, definitely drop in the comments. Let me know. There's definitely some teams I have not gotten to yet. But I definitely can still do those. I know Oregon's a team that always seems to pop up. UCF, there's some UCF fans out there. And obviously haven't done one with Florida State yet, so maybe that's in the works. And I have done one with Miami and Florida before, but what I did was I took that 0-1 Miami team against the 0-8 Gator team into the full game simulation. So if there's one of those you guys want to see, that 2001 team face, you definitely let me know. I like when you guys drop in the comments with positivity and creativity. It definitely helps out a ton. So here we go. I'm not going to lie. I know it's only a simulation. I know it probably doesn't mean a whole lot. However, I'd like to see Miami get a drive together here. It's only a minute and a half, so it's not going to be easy starting from your own 31. But I think if you're looking at this from a Miami standpoint, I touched on third downs earlier being a point of emphasis for improvement. I think it goes in line with two-minute offense and red zone offense as well. So that's a good start for the first down of this two-minute offense. So Derek. It was a six for seven in the half, so that's good to see. Jeremiah Payton, definitely excited about him and his future. A little surprised that he didn't play more last year, but that is what it is. Looking forward to moving forward. Okay, that's a tough throw there by Derek. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance. Just getting a doing. real close up look at these the white helmets by the Gators. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tennis. White uniforms. Like Obviously, it's a little bit different than what they normally quarter. go with, but I thought it'd be to interesting to see these guys. And Miami's got their probably uniforms. So that's Peyton again, number 12. There we go. And he earned that red shirt last year but just because he played in only four games, so he's a red shirt freshman this year. He was Miami's highest regarded, highest rated recruit in that 2019 class. Okay, so call timeout. This is a big third down here. Minute. We've got 101 left before halftime. I know Miami would love to tie the game up here, but definitely want to get at least a field goal out of this. That's a good throw. Mike Harley, I think that was number three, Mark Harley. I think that's who got the reception there. That was good to see. Yeah, there it is. Mike Harley, 21 yard catch. Down to the 29. Almost the 28 here. Derek with the moves. I like that. Stayed in the pocket, tried to stay in as long as possible, but then he gets out. Gets on the move there. Okay, so all of a sudden Miami's down to the 13-yard line. Plenty of time left. I think at this point you definitely want to see Miami get a touchdown. I'm curious to see what, how they go about this. So, because last time they were inside the 10, inside the red zone, they seem to be throwing it quite often. Again, plenty of plenty of time, just a one timeout left, but 49 seconds to go. From the red zone 
now. They'll look to throw. Stepping up. He's going to keep it. That's tough. Gets a little bit. So many times we talk about having good eye Dexter, that's, that's Florida's big. They're big time recruit. Big time defensive tackle. They were able to hold him for a short game when he took off running. Here we go. 25 seconds left. Here's second and eight. Oh, did he get it? No. Man. That's Wiggins there. That's a good look. You definitely want to throw into the end zone. At this point, you're at the 12 here. So 20 seconds left. Third and eight. I talked about third downs earlier. We'll see if they can convert here. Not going to be easy. So we got receivers to the right. Shotgun. Okay, he's on the move. Oh, my God. He gets in there. Eric King shows off the legs. Makes the correct read there instead of forcing it in the end zone. Third and eight, he definitely could have just got the first down. He goes in. Slides underneath the Florida defense. There we go. Nice play by D'Eric. So it looks like unless something crazy happens, it's going to go in 14-14 at halftime. Here, yeah, celebrating with the squad. And it was capped off by a 12 yard touchdown run. Nice little picture there. Man, you see it right there. Like, you guys know how I feel about these double numbers. Glad that's going to be going away soon. But that's just me. I know everybody, most people probably like it. So, and the players probably like it too. So, you understand it. But anyways, okay, here we go. That's Tony number one. Looking for a big return. Miami wants to definitely not this allow any big plays here. He 14 away. seconds left. Tied up at 14. Florida has all three timeouts. At the two. That's a nice play right there. That's six. The that's Sam Brooks. Down, Had that huge performance in the bowl game. Where he led the team in tackles in his first start. So that was good to see for him. You're definitely hoping he builds on that for this year. Because without a doubt, I think Miami is going to be counting on him on defense to fill the linebacker spot. There he is again. I think that was him again. Oh, that was Frierson. I apologize. Number three, Gilbert Frierson. Touched on him earlier. So there we go. Tied up at 14. Big thanks to everybody for tuning in. Again, drop in the comments if you want to see another matchup. That's one of the reasons why they're only a quarter, only a half. I want to do multiple matchups as opposed to the time that it takes to full, do a full game. But definitely might be able to do a full game during the season. Just want to thank everybody for watching once again. Thank you for subscribing. We've got to get to 10,000. Also, check out InsideTheU.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at InsideTheU. Take care.